Okay, so why should you become a city carrier? Why should you work at the post office at all? Man, look, I'm going to tell you something, bro. I don't care where you worked in the past. If you're the type of person that love to be outside, love to be around people and, and interact with folks, bro, this is the job. Because for one, the first thing that you got to realize is the honor that comes with handling people's stuff and meeting important people. There's honor in that. You know, when you walk up to a person and you give them what they need or they expecting a check or they expecting some type of documents or something, like if you walk into a lawyer's office, for example, and that lawyer get used to seeing your face, you got a plug right there. You know what I mean? Like you got a friend right there and you make so many important friends and a lot of different um, interactions with people, man. So don't sleep on the fact that the connections are there. Like this job provides excellent networking capability. Okay. Like <clears throat> if you want to be a small business owner, for example, if you learn how the mail works, you can easily get all of your advertising in the mail. Um, you can network with people while you're outside. You know, like me, for example, as a photographer and a videographer, I meet so many business owners that need coverage, that need advertising, just being on the mail route. And they trust me because I am the mailman. Number one, they're going to see me every week. OK, they're going to see me. And also they know that I have something to lose. So I can't take none of their money. I can't mess them over with no product, anything like that, because they know that I am a person with priorities and I have an important job. So on top of me being a mail carrier, I can also provide other services to you guys. All right. So that's one of the benefits of the network effect when it comes down to working at the post office. The next thing is the benefits, y'all. I care, mental care, uh, physical care. Um, oral, everything, you know, everything that you need, you can pretty much get from the post office and, um, and benefits. So like, if you want to get, if you want to get a checkup every month or you want to, you know, get your teeth cleaned up, get them white, get some braces or something like that, you can do that, man. You know what I'm saying? And the post office will take most of that cost from you so you won't have to worry about it like i know um uh, i've just recently started getting some dental work done man and i've been maybe three four five appointments in and i owe the clinic a hundred dollars out of it, all the things that they've done for me um as far as eyewear goes you know i can go and get a checkup on my eyes in the time that i want i didn't have to pay anything for these glasses that i got on okay not at all and they wrap lauren glasses so the benefits are there um, I went and got a checkup the other day. Um, I went in, signed in, seen my doctor, walked out. No copay, no none of that. I I didn't even get a bill. And of course, my son is on the same plan, so he can get checked up as well. So when people talk about us having great benefits, that's the truth. We really do have great benefits. Those benefits do come with a cost because I pay two hundred and fifty dollars every pay period for federal blue cross blue shield but the post office pays like 700 you see what i'm saying so yeah it's more expensive but you're making the money to cover it you don't miss it i mean when i look at my paycheck now versus my paycheck when i was a cca yeah it is a a, a decrease there is a decrease um, in the beginning, you'll see a very sharp decrease because once all the benefits start to come out, all the TSP investing starts to come out. God, please, no, 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 no. You'll see that your your paycheck is a lot less than it was when you were a CCA. When I was a CCA, I was seeing $2,000 easy, no problem. Sometimes 22, just depending on my overtime, and how hard I worked, especially during the holidays. We was making a killing. I said, man, I ain't going to never leave this job. You know, when I first started, I was like, work me every day. You know, I ain't got nothing else to do. Let me work. You know what I'm saying? But of course, over time, I got started getting tired and I wanted my off days. But, um, when you cross over to regular and you start paying for those benefits and you start investing in TSP and we're going to cover TSP also on this channel in detail, because I want to show you guys the opportunity of investing in TSP and how to make your money grow. I'm talking about triple double in a few years. So be on the lookout for the TSP video that we'll be dropping soon. Now, this next reason 
it's kind of funny, but I see it happening all the time. A lot of people come to the post office and they end up getting married to another coworker. Okay. Like this happens a lot. And when you have two of these incomes in the same household, man, it's, oh man, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Everybody get good benefits in the home. Y'all both bringing in the same paycheck, man. You know, you get to work together. You get to see each other at home. Now, you know, some people don't want to see their wives all day. But, like, if you fall in love with the right person, man, I'm telling you, dog, working together and living together and bringing home that money together like that, man, can really escalate your life. Um, in my situation, my wife, she doesn't work at all. She stays at home with the kids and she does her thing, you know, and I go out and work. So I'm able to take care of a household of five. OK, so it's a great opportunity. Um, I take my son to school every morning and I pick him up from school um, during the day and I'm able to leave work to go and get him and then come back. But that comes down to time management at the end of the day. You got to manage your time right. Um, another reason why I would say that you should work at the post office is, you know, the post office is one of those jobs where they have to innovate in order to stay relevant. Like the post office can't really fall off. You know what I'm saying? And if they do fall off, then, of course, there will be alternatives created by the government so that we stay employed. But they want to make sure that the Postal Service is something that stays around for generations and generations because mail delivery is something that has been taking a hit recently because of everything being digital. And there are some of my coworkers that feel like, you know, sooner or later, the post office won't be a thing anymore. I can understand that view. But I don't feel like the government is going to let it happen. But we'll see. You guys let me know what you guys think about the future of mail delivery in the comments, because everything is digital. Uh, paperless billing, you know, paying for your stuff on the app, paying your bills on the apps and, you know, stuff like that. So I can see why uh, uh, that thought would cross anyone's mind. And um, honestly, <laughs> The way I'm set up right now, I'm planning on not even retiring from the post office anyway. Hopefully I don't have to retire. Hopefully I can retire early. Let's just say that because I'm working on a lot of different things at, uh, at one time, which I want to express some of these things to you guys in later videos. Another thing that's great about working at the post office is the exercise that you get. If you want to stay in shape, there is no there is no other place that you would rather work other than being a, a gym trainer or something like that. Um, but here, because we're outside in the heat, we sweating all the time, man. We hopping in and out, we running, we using our legs and hopping up steps and, you know, just consistent movement, consistent blood flow. You know what I mean? Consistent cardio. That's what we do out here. And so it's easy to stay in shape at the post office. But once you get on one of those routes, that's like mailbox to mailbox and you ain't got to get out no more. That's when you start to get top heavy. And if you're a carrier right now, you know what I'm talking about. Like big at the top, small at the bottom, man. So if you on a riding route all day, then yeah, you got to actually go to the gym. Unlike some of us that get out and walk loops all day, you know, we pretty much trimmed up. You know, we might have a little good from eating a lot on the route, which is something that I highly don't recommend because you spend a lot of money when you do that. Um, but usually when you walk in the routes, you're in better shape than the people that ride all day. Also, I got to give a shout out to the plug BMG Money. BMG Money is a financial institution that helps out postal employees. They let us take out loans and they do payroll deductions. Um, I would highly suggest that you check out BMG Money if you want to start a business or if you want to start investing in assets and things like that. Um, I personally used BMG Money and I've been using them for about five years now. And they've helped me create so many opportunities for myself as far as like getting my camera business going and also investing in stocks and bonds and cryptocurrency as well we'll get into that in further detail as well in future videos but i just wanted to throw the plug out there because bmg money man they really upgraded my life all right next thing is the retirement so if you do plan on staying the whole 30 years and you invest in TSP, um, we have a retirement system called FERS, okay? And it's basically like a three-part retirement system where you get the um, Social Security retirement, you also get the TSP retirement, and you get something from the post office as well. One of my coworkers that just retired about a year ago, he, he took home about $600,000 in retirement. 
uh, with everything together. Like he uh, he did TSP. He didn't pull nothing out. And in his TSP account, he took the safest route, which is like government bonds and stuff like that. He took the safe route. He was still able to pull six hundred thousand plus Social Security as well. So that's what he got in total. And uh, that was a good retirement for him. He had just built a, a brand new house and now he can pay that house off and still have a few hundred thousand dollars in his pocket that he can just do whatever you want to do with. So the retirement is great. As long as you don't start pulling from the retirement early because you do have the option to pull from your retirement through TSP, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you have some type of life crisis or something going on. But it's best to not even... Look at your TSP. Just let it keep rolling over, rolling over, rolling over. Don't even look at it because you will get tempted when you see thirty and forty thousand dollars sitting there. You will get temp tempted to mess with that money. You won't be able to pull the whole thing out. I think it's like ten percent or or whatever you've allocated. It's whatever you've allocated to the system. You can pull back out plus the profits, of course. But um, the post office matches what you put in so you kind of double up every time that's why it's such a great thing to do because if you put in two hundred dollars into tsp every two weeks the post office put that same two hundred dollars in so and there's ways you can um change the percentage as well so it's a good thing to do man i just wouldn't mess with it i would just put the money in and don't even look at it you know, until you get to the point to where you're ready to start investing in common stocks and uh, international stocks and stuff like that, which I'll show you guys on this channel. But yeah, I just wanted to make a quick video, you know, while I'm out just hanging out on my off day. Um, I hope you guys have a great day, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, man. I need y'all like the video. I need y'all, man. Let's get this thing going. I'll be back soon.